So a lot of times people ask me how to do the spot color technique or um, where you just have one thing in color and the rest of it is in black and white. And there's a lot of ways you can do this, especially if you have one color that stands out. Like let's say you have an image with a lot of cool colors, but then just one thing that's bright red and you want to make that one red thing stand out and the rest of it be black and white. There are a ton of techniques for this online for that type of a photo. But what do you do when you have a photo that has too many of the same color and you want everything to be, let's say, black and white except for her mask or even keep her in color, but the rest of it in black and white? Well, we use masks to do this and we can do some um, the adjustment layers in order to make this happen. So how I have this right here is I have just a plain background and then I want this invitation to be black. So I put a solid black fill. And then I have the picture of the masquerade uh, girl in at the top. So for this particular one, I actually want to fade out the picture first with a gradient fade. So one of the things you can do with masks is you can hit the mask button to add it to your image. And I accidentally hit that twice. So here's my mask. And the thing with masks is black conceals white reveals. That's the rhyme we always say. So anytime you see white on a mask, it's revealing all of the pixels on this particular image. So that's why we can see everything. If we were to paint black, let's go ahead and get the black paintbrush, fill it with black in the foreground. And if I were to swipe this right across, you can see that now we have this black stripe and it's concealing all of those pixels in that area. So the good thing about using a mask though is it isn't erased, it's still there. We just have to flip to white and go back over and paint it. So I'll go ahead and make a bigger one because again, white reveals. So what we can do is we actually don't want a mask on here. I just wanted to demonstrate it. So I can right click on here and choose delete layer mask. What I want to do is add an adjustment layer and I want to do um, a black and white photo. So this photo, if I go up to image mode, it's on CMYK. Unfortunately, the black and white adjustment does not work on CMYK photos. But what you can do is go to hue and saturation and then bring the saturation all the way down. And that takes all the color out of it. Now, if I didn't want to do that, and I'll show you why, I can go into image mode RGB and it'll say, do you want to flatten image? We can just say, don't flatten. And then it'll say, do you want to rasterize? And I want to say, don't rasterize. And then it'll put this in RGB mode now when I go to adjustments, I can choose black and white. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, great, that looks exactly the same. But when I do this, now I can control the blacks and the whites for all the colors in the image. So there's a lot of reds, so you can see it's affecting a lot of the image. And then I could come in here and say yellows, so I can pull those down or bring them up. And I can do, if there's any blues, you'll see some of it in the mask, especially I think she has some greens in the mask. Well, it's not showing it. There we go. So if I wanted to make the mask um, change a little bit. So you get more control with the black and white adjustment layer when you're in RGB mode. Now, in order to print this, you're going to make this and see you need to make it in CMYK mode. And that's when you'd want to duplicate this and then just flatten your image. But for our purposes right now, whether you have a hue saturation or a black and white adjustment, either of them come with a mask automatically. So this white mask is saying it's revealing all of that black and white adjustment all across this image. So if I were to click on that mask, grab my brush and switch it to black, it's going to conceal that black and white adjustment wherever I paint. So for this particular technique, what I want to do, I'll go ahead and zoom in and then use the space bar to focus on her mask. I want to make her mask in color and the rest of it in black and white. So again, with the mask selected and my brush, I'm actually going to paint black wherever her mask is so that I can seal, so I can conceal the black and white on her mask. So my brush is a little bit too big and it's maybe a little bit too soft. So I'll bring this up. And when we're talking about hardness and softness, if I make it totally soft, like 0% hard, when I paint, see how it's got this really soft edge around it? I'll go ahead and do undo and show you what it looks like when it's completely hard. So when I paint with a completely hard brush, it has this really harsh line. 
So I want to do somewhere a combination of those. Hard is not very forgiving, but it creates really nice clean lines. Soft is really forgiving, but it can get a little bit sloppy. So I'll adjust my brush size. And again, you can come up here and change your size here. I use the bracket keys on the keyboard. The key is just to the right of the P key. And now I can come in here and paint anywhere that I want to reveal that color. Now, in the interest of time, you can see that I'm being really sloppy. Well, here's the thing. You can be really sloppy with this because then you can go back in. I mean, it, it's not, it's a time waster to be really sloppy, so try not to be. But if I just wanted to get the majority of this painted, I can and make sure I get everything in there that I want to be in color. And then all I have to do is flip to white and conceal or reveal that black and white on any spillage areas here. So an easy way to flip is to use this button here or again hit X and that X key is going to flip. So here if I hit X, you'll see it flipping in the foreground background. Okay, so wherever I want to reveal that black and white, I'm going to come back in and paint over here. So I'm going to try to get in and if I mess up again, make my brush a little bit smaller, hit X to paint black, hit X to go back to white and clean up all of that spillage here. So the cool thing about this is once you have this mask painted, you can do um, some pretty awesome things. You can change the mask color if you would rather have something other than this pink and red. So this is where I might do some more soft brushes that make it a little bit softer because it's going to be a little less forgiving up here where there's feathers. So I'm going to go ahead and try to clean this up and then um, move, move on from here. So just pretend that I actually took a lot of time with this and that it looks good. So, all right, so that's the basics of working with mask. Now, again, you're not doing any harm to this. So that's the beauty of working with a mask. You're not erasing anything. You're not altering the picture um, in any permanent way. So you can always go back and you can keep flipping back and forth. All right. So there her mask is in color. Now for her, I actually want to add a mask. So I'll add manually a mask onto the photo, grab my gradient tool, and I'm going to change to black. And in my gradient color picker, I'm going to choose black to transparent or foreground to transparent. And we want the foreground color to be black. So it looks black to transparent. And then with it in a linear um, mode and make sure it's not reversed. If it is, then click reverse to make it not reverse, whatever. Just mess with that little check box if it doesn't go the right way. So starting from the edge of the photo where I want it to fade out, and I'm going to hold shift just so it goes in a straight line and I'm going to go all the way to her face and that's going to give it a nice soft edge that blends into that black background. Now, if I want more room for the text, I can start earlier or later or further into the picture and that gives me a nice edge there. I can also do an angle if I wanted to, but I think that cuts her off. So maybe I could do an angle from there. Uh, it doesn't do that. So we'll just do something like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Now, the other cool thing is I can come to adjustments and I can do hue and saturation and I can change the color of the mask. And as you can see, it's only affecting the mask because the rest of it um, is black and white down here and so it's not changing it. So this is where you can do a really quick um, change and then be able to put your text for the inv invitation and color coordinate it and do something related to the theme of the event that you're designing for. But this is just the basics of working with masks and doing that color effect. And especially on a photo where it had a lot of the same colors in the first place. So the traditional technique won't work.